Hi, everyone. This is Paul Case of the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame educational video series where we discuss Kempo principles, concepts. Sometimes we talk about the history of Kempo. Sometimes we'll talk about forms or fighting techniques. We'll explore other areas of Mr. Parker's uh, Kempo, American Kempo, uh, for example, points of view terminology. And occasionally we're very, very fortunate to have special guests. And today we have a really terrific woman who has given a lot to the American Kempo system. I've known of her for a long time. She is a Frank Trejo black belt. She also trained under uh, Tommy Chavez. And it is truly an honor to welcome the 2022 Kempo Karate Hall of Fame nominee, Professor Terry Hicks. Hello, Terry. How are you, honey? I am wonderful, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you. Look at that smile. That's great. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's let's ask some questions. We want to introduce you to the Kempo community. Those that are in the know, know. Those that are not in the know, don't know. And we're going to make sure that everybody knows who Professor Terry Hicks is. All righty. So let's look at your background. Why don't you tell us a little bit how you came to be a Kempo practitioner? Okay. I started Kempo in 1981 at Ed Parker's Pasadena Studio. Um, prior to that, I had lived in San Francisco and I took Kempo, K-E-M-P-O, with Mr. Beliso for a short period of time. When I came back to LA, um, I needed to find somewhere to work out and I really wasn't um, aware at the time of all the many styles in the martial arts. I was very ignorant to that. So I just found a studio that was close, um, a convenient place for me to, to work out and that just happened to be Ed Parker's studio. I thought the, the styles would be the same, but the one that I studied in San Francisco was K-E-M-P-O, not K-E-N-P-O. Now they used um, Mr. Parker's uh, Kempo Creed, but um, the forms and the and the techniques and everything were, were very different. So I came to the Pasadena studio and, um, in 1981 and I stayed there until I was a black belt. It took me nine years to become a black belt. It was a long journey, but um, I persevered. Um, at the time, I also, I was in my, I was about 27 when I started, and um, I was right in the middle of a very um, uh, lucrative but uh, demanding career. So um, between um, working and getting my four nights a week in and my private classes, I, I, um, it took me nine years to, to become a first degree black belt. Who was the first teacher? That you you either did a lesson with or or trained with, okay. In the, in the Ed Parker School, I'm sorry, in in Pasadena. At, at, in Pasadena at, at Ed Parker School, as a white belt, um, it was Paul Gerard that introduced me, it, uh, and when I became a yellow belt, Mr. Trejo um, became my private instructor, and he be he continued to be my instructor all the way through to black. Yes. Okay, and and so Paul started you for the initial. Yes, he was my. He was the first one that, that gave me the the intro, the intro, and and as a white belt, I I trained with Paul. Yes. Okay, and then when you tested for your yellow belt, is that when uh, Frank took over? Um, I can't remember if it was just before before I tested for yellow or or, or after yellow. I just know that uh, all of my privates from yellow all the way through black were with Frank. Yes. What was the best? thing that you learned from Mr. Trejo? Did you, what was his influence on you? There were so many, you know. Um, Pick one or two. Okay. One was, uh, uh, he always impressed upon me that basics, you know, um, he was always on me about the basics. This is the foundation of this art and um, you have to have strong basics. The other thing that he impressed upon me is not to sacrifice my techniques for speed, you know, um, and that took that that was uh, that was something that I hold dearly to me, and I teach that constantly. You know, don't um, don't sacrifice your technique for speed. 
uh, build on your on the foundation on the basics. Um, when you're studying the basics, you are are creating muscle memory. You know, so you want to create a muscle memory that is correct because it's too hard to correct it after you've um, trained using training your body using the wrong muscle memory. It's too hard to go back and fix it. So um, I am when I'm teaching, I really impress upon the the, the basics, you know, um, the right weight distribution, the right angles, um, and not just for optimum um, power, but for the safety of the body, for, you know, uh, for safety. Um, and um, can we pause one second? Sure. So Terry, tell me about your training. You originally started with Paul Gerard, and by the way, Paul Gerard, John Morrill, Steve Orsino, and and I were Frank's first black belts that tested in '81. So you're starting with Paul. Too bad you didn't have me. <laughs> you never gotten to Frank. <laughs> and so if uh, so, then you go, and now you're now going to train with Frank Trejo. Mm -hmm. What did Frank instill upon you? Mm -hmm. Frank constantly stressed the basics, you know. Um, it's because of him that uh, I stress the basics, you know. It's the foundation of the art and um, and uh, strong basics are what he impressed upon me every single class. When I was doing the warm-up, normally, um, well, I am a strong believer that um, you have to prepare your body for this art, you know. Um, a lot of these guys want to come in and they want to kick to the head. Well, you can't kick to the head if you can't touch your toes, you know. So um, in the warm-ups, I, I stress um, not just physical strength, but mental strength. Do you ever work with children? Occasionally I have. I have um, uh, subbed at Shaleen's studio several times for her students. And at um, Mr. Chavi's studio, I have taught this, the the children occasionally, but um, most of the time um, I have taught the teenagers and adults. What's the most challenging thing you find when you teach a child versus an adult? Um, focus, a focus. Um, sometimes, especially if there's a group of children, you have to keep them all busy, you know, so you can't focus <laughs> on one child because then the rest of them go haywire. So I find that a bit challenging in, in, in teaching the little ones, you know, keeping them all interested and keeping them all moving, you know, and keeping them focused. Is there a different approach with the genders? Not when I'm teaching the, the kids or the, or the, or the uh, adults. No, there, there's no, no, no difference. We're all in there as artists. We're all in there to, to learn this art. And, um, you know, there are... Um, is the most important thing that you believe because you're now a six degree black belt mm -hmm. and you've been in front of many students at all different ranks and ages and and related experience how do you build that confidence between you and the student through respecting them and allowing them to respect me and by um like I said, I, I'm big on the basics, you know, and um, encourage them. And through me encouraging them and them listening to me, it encourages me. Let's let's go to another thing. You've had several teachers, obviously. You've had you've had Mr. You had Paul Gerard and whoever else was in Pasadena, and then you had Mr. Trejo, and then you trained also with Tommy Chavez. Okay, what lessons did you learn? from Mr. Chavez. Okay, Mr. Chavez is, um, Tommy Chavez is like a brother to me. Um, he, um, he, th this art is his life. This art is his life. And it's amazing to me, the students that um, he brings to this art, um, families, not just, um, people that come and go, I mean, whole families that come in. And and I've seen some of his students um, that are black belts, that are adults now that bring their children there and then their children. So you see generations of families in his studio, 
you know. Um, he's an excellent teacher. Um, he uh, he adores, he loves this art and he, he, all of his students, all of his students, especially his upper rank students, um, he doesn't allow them to degrade the art in any way. If um, there's any disrespectfulness, I don't care how long they've been with him. He has no problem with throwing them out. You know, um, he's a strong believer in uh, respect, respect for the heart, for the art, um, and uh, and and I love him. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, uh, I've known him a long time. Mm -hmm. I remember him in Pasadena training there. I saw his relationship with Frank Trejo, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I saw his relationship with Mr. Parker. Mm -hmm. Utmost respect. Tommy is a first class individual and he continues that the uh, the legacy of those people that were in front of him. He's a, he is a great influence and it's wonderful that you would share that with us. Let's go to only a couple more questions before we conclude. Um, what do you think your vision, you're going to look at yourself now and you're going to think five years, 10 years and 20 years from now, five, 10 and 20 years from now, what is your vision for Kempo, the ev evolution of Kempo, the way you practice it and how you see it will develop or will it develop? Okay. I, I can, I can only speak for, for how my journey in, in tempo tempo and what i i can offer as a as an instructor because i didn't come to the art for self-defense or for fighting or anything like that i came to find a way of grounding and centering myself and this is i, I didn't know this in the beginning but i came to the art for the dragon aspect for the spiritual aspect Okay, so um, there are many things that I have seen in, uh, um, during my journey that um, parallel with spiritual practices in indigenous nations. You know, when I look at our uh, salutation when we come in, many of the hand, uh, several of the hand gestures that are in our salutation, I have seen used in an in indigenous ceremony. So when I look at the opening of our class with the um, salutation and the ending of the class, this is how I look at it. I look at it as we are in the beginning, when we do the salutation, we are opening sacred space. We are leaving the out world, outside world outside and we are taking our journey inward into our practice. We're in a safe place. We're building a safe place for all of us to be together to learn. Um, and we do that, that short meditation, and that is to help center ourselves, bring ourselves inward. At the end of the class, we do the salutation, and we are closing that sacred space, and we are preparing ourselves to go back out into the world. You know? So that short meditation there is to allow us to focus and prepare ourselves to go back out into the world. So my Kempo journey has been more of a, of a spiritual journey. It has taught me how to breathe. It has taught me how to ground myself. Um, and, and when I teach my, it's my when I'm teaching, um, not only do I stress the basics, I am also teaching them that you have to prepare your body for this art. A kiai is not just a word, you know, you have to know how to use the core in order for that kiai to mean something, you know, you're, you're, if you're using it correctly, you're protecting the core of your body. You know, you're not just saying ki, you know, but you have to have the strength of the core in order to be able to use it. So um, if you don't, if you don't prepare the body for the art, um, you, you cannot progress and, 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 and use it proficiently. You know, um, uh, um, I, I teach them how to keep the, the bones in alignment so that you have backup mass. Um, I see a lot of students that want to leave their hands open or whatever. Well, you know, if you're not going to make a fist, if you're going to use your hand, pay attention to what happens when you pull the thumb back, what happens to the hand, what, what's engaged in the hand, you know, does it, how it becomes a weapon, you know, so you're not just flying your hands around so that you can break your fingers or whatever. So um, these are the things that I focus on in the art and, and what I would like to, what I would 
would like to contribute to the art is that um, this is not just a physical journey. This is a mental journey. This is a way of becoming a, 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 a whole human being, you know. And, um, and Mr. Parker has always said that um, a true black belt is someone that doesn't have to use the art. So we go through this long journey of all the techniques, all the katas, all of this training. And this is not just to defend yourself. It is for you to understand yourself. It is for you to know yourself. And, um, and that's uh, beautiful. I got to tell you, that was so well said. And I have, and, and, and that's probably the first time I've had anybody actually explore that side of, of our temple. Everybody else talks about their accomplishments and, and, and things that may be important to certain people, but the personal improvement there, it, mm -hmm. it is your art, Terry, and it, it will always be your art and you can share it with somebody, but that doesn't mean you gave it up. It's still all yours and your, your journey is a wonderful journey. And I hope that, I hope that a lot of people that see this, this mm -hmm. video, and those that will see and meet you at the Hall of Fame event in June, will take the moment to really meet a very special person. You're a beautiful human being. I've known you a long time. I'm so glad that we've reconnected. Congratulations on your nomination. More importantly, congratulations on the beautiful things you've shared with children and adults. And I hope that this journey continues on for the remainder of your life and those lives that you touch. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. And Kimpo has been and will continue to be a part of my life always it's it's a journey it's a life journey yes thank it you it is it is i it truly is well then on behalf of the Kempo karate hall of fame educational video series and the 2022 Kempo karate hall of fame nominee professor terry hicks we wish you all the very best thank you terry for coming on the show and we look thank forward you. to seeing everybody in june salute all right thank you for having me god bless you.